All right, everyone, in this video, we're going to take a look at activity 114, pulley drives and sprockets. So when you click on pulley drives and sprockets in Canvas, where this is going to be set up in a Google Doc, and you're going to be able to see what we're working with. This is a very short activity to allow us, so once we have Google go through and load for us, we will see what we're working with. So I'm going to go ahead and click to open up into the new tab. And I'm going to kind of walk you through what this is going to look like. I'm going to do an example from each kind of section. And then the rest of this will be up to you to finish and submit. All right, pulley drives and sprockets. So the thing is about pulley drives and sprockets, they achieve the same tasks as gears by transferring power through rotary motion. And depending on how pulleys and sprockets are applied, their speed, direction, and torque, they can be modified within the system. And pulleys and sprockets are used in everyday machines. You look for anything for printer heads with a desktop printer. Typically, belts and pulleys are easier to manufacture. They're lighter weight and less expensive to purchase than sprockets and chains. But Chains and sprockets are more difficult to manufacture and often noisier, but they have the advantage of not slipping as easily and tend to be more durable than a belt and pulley system. So we're going to learn about the belt and pulley systems and chain and chain and sprocket systems that you can be able to use. And you're going to calculate ratios of those examples in both systems in a lab environment. So a belt and pulley system, here's the thing to kind of look at. And this is the same thing that works with gears, is that you got to look at the input. So the input is the one doing the driving or doing the moving. So if the input is bigger, and when it gets trans when it's transferring motion to an output pulley, if the output pulley is smaller, that means you are going to gain more speed, but you're going to have less torque. And so that's the thing to look at is your comparison between the sizes of your pulleys, your gears, or your sprockets that you're using. On the flip side, if you go through and you have an input pulley that is smaller and it is going to be driving a larger pulley, then you're going to have more torque, but you're going to have less speed. So a smaller pulley generates more speed. A larger one will generate less speed, but more torque from a larger pulley, less torque from a smaller one. So just keep that in mind as we move forward. All right, so here with the belts and pulley systems, here are some of our, uh, there are no teeth, but we must rely on the diameter of each pulley. We can also do the angular velocity and the amount of torque that is being used as well. So here is, so it's very common for a lot of multiple pulleys to be used with a single belt. And here's what we have in figure two. So we're going to assume pulley A is the power source or the input, and it's moving clockwise. So which way would the other pulleys rotate clockwise or counterclockwise? Complete the table below. So we're going to go through and put that in. So again, if you look at my mouse, pulley A is moving clockwise. It follows the direction of which the hands on a clock would move, so it's turning clockwise. The belt will then flow through the pulley, and in B, you're going to notice as it goes down around the bottom, and it's going to make pulley B spin counterclockwise. So it's going to make it turn in an opposite direction from A. So here in B, I'm going to go ahead and put that that's going to be counterclockwise. So as you take a look, you're going to go through the belt. So if you, as you see, as the belt feeds in around C, which direction is it going? Is C going to be turning as the belt goes around? Same thing with D. As it goes around the bottom, which direction will it be turning? And you're going to mark your answers for C and D there. So I already gave you a letter B. Go ahead and try out for C and D. All right, as we go forward, number two, using the diameter of each pulley in that figure, what is the ratio between pulley A and the other three pulleys? Complete the table below. So for B to A, we're looking at the diameter out over the diameter in, in this case. So for B, we have a three inch diameter pulley. A, we have a six inch diameter pulley. So in this case, the output is going to be is going to be B. So here we had a three inch diameter pulley. And then we also have on the bottom, you can click inside of here, six inches for the A size pulley. And when you go through and what this other side here is for is to reduce our fraction. So here we get a one and the units will cancel each other. Here you're going to get a one over two scenario. The final answer is expressed as in a colon format is a one to two ratio in that particular case. So that's what you're doing for this section.
go ahead and look at C to A. So since A is the input, it's always going to be on the bottom, that's 6 inches. And then you're going to compare and see what kind of, of ratio that you get from there for the rest of the pulleys. All right, as we move forward, the other thing too, we can use proportions to help determine what kind of torque output is going to be generated at each pulley. So here, the torque force we know for pulley A is 120 foot-pounds. What they're asking, what is the corresponding torque values at, at pulleys B, C, and D? And they want us to complete the table. So here, we go through and we can put in the diameter out over diameter in. So there was a 3-inch diameter on pulley B. There's a 6-inch diameter on pulley A. And then here, if we have torque output, we've got the torque at B. That's our variable. What is our input torque up here in the problem? They told us we had 120. If you want to copy this unit, you can do so. I'm going to control C, click in there, and paste that in. So 120 foot-pounds. The units are going to cancel except for the foot-pounds. You're going to cross, multiply, and divide in this scenario. So when you go through and you take a look at this, you are going to end up taking 120 times 3 and dividing by 6, which is going to give you 60, and our final answer, 60 foot-pounds of torque. Okay, And if you need to apply the um, format painter, the little paintbrush, let's see if we can apply this here. There we go. So 160 foot-pounds of torque will end up being uh, put in to our pulley. So when you think about the pulleys, here's the thing about this one. Pulley B is smaller, and it's half the size of pulley A. So if torque A, or if the torque at A is 120 pounds, that means it's only going to generate, since it's half the size of pulley A, it's going to only generate half as much torque. So you see how they're related. They're proportional to each other in that case. So go ahead and see, go ahead and test out. Now when you go through and you look at this, a little hint, pulley C is bigger than pulley A, so you should be generating more torque. And so is D, so you should have more than 120 foot-pounds of torque for both C and D just as we go along without giving away any other further answers. Okay? All right, and then as you go along, they're going to talk about chain and sprocket systems, just going through and discussing what those are, and then you're going to have your conclusion questions. So make sure you do a real good job. There are multiple questions in number one, asking about what's the purpose of the timing belt, and is it more like a belt and pulley system or a chain and sprocket system? Defend your answer. So make sure that you go through and you really answer this question really well. Same thing here. How can you go through and manipulate to harness more speed from an output? That kind of goes back up. I'm going to give you a hint. Figure 1, where it shows the two uh, configurations. Take a look at that one. And then number 3, when you're climbing a hill on a bike with different speeds. Again, you got two questions there. What happens when you switch to higher gears? How can you go through and make sure you answer both questions in that, in that prompt? So in that case. All right, so once you're done with that, you're able to hit Submit on the assignment page when you get finished and then you are able to move on to activity 115 which are the um, practice problems for gears pulley drives and sprockets so again just covering more of the same kind of content that you've already been doing here in class